Oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, this is my constant longing and prayer. Gladly I'll forfeit all of earth's treasures, Jesus, thy perfect likeness to wear. Oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Oh, to be like thee, while I am pleading, pour out thy spirit, fill with thy love. Make me a temple, meet for thy dwelling, fit me for life and heaven above. Oh, to be like thee, Oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Hallelujah. Oh, to be like thee, like Jesus Christ. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness. Stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Praise the Lord. What a joy to be with you again. Praise the Lord through this medium of the internet, different social platforms, social media. Praise the Lord by the grace of God. Shalom to you. My name is Reverend Luther Doctorian. Praise the Lord that God, through his wonderful grace and mercy, has brought this day that I can preach this sermon to the camera and to you wherever you are. And I praise God that this day has come. The Lord has taken me to 45 nations of the world, and I've been preaching the gospel for so many years in so many countries. And now I'm able to preach through this media to reach souls for Christ. And I praise God for that. And it's such a joy. And today's message that I want to preach is about God's amazing grace. God's amazing grace. He has even come to me. I am Jewish by birth. Yes, I am from the natural branch by the grace of God. Yes, I am Armenian as well. But praise God, more importantly than that, to my Jewish people, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to my forefathers, the Messiah was promised, the anointed one. And Abraham saw his day and rejoiced. David saw the day of Christ and rejoiced. And praise God, Jesus, my Mashiach, the anointed one, came 2,000 years ago. And I thank God forever and ever that he has opened up my eyes. And I have received and seen my Christ, my Jesus, Yeshua Mashiach, the anointed one. And I have accepted him as my Lord and Savior. And I've been born again by the Spirit of God. Just as Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, the Pharisee, and said, you have to be born again by the Spirit. Praise the Lord that I am now a new creation created in Jesus Christ to do good works that the Father had put for me before the foundations of the earth. And I praise God to, for salvation. God's amazing grace. And it's wonderful that when we read in Isaiah, I want to read from the word of God. And every time I preach, if I'm preaching in a church, anywhere in, in, in any country, in any city, and even today as I'm preaching here, wherever you are, in your home, you could be in a school, you could be at a business place, you can be outside on the street. You could be at the beach. Wherever you are, stand in God's presence or kneel. Every time I read the word of God, when I am alone, I read it on my knees. Or I read it standing. Why? Because of the reverence of God. This word of God 
is Jesus himself. It's alive. Jesus is alive and his words are forever. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away, God said. And, and I'm going to read from Isaiah chapter 63 and verse 1. Let's go there. How beautiful it is. Isaiah 63 verse 1 and then 8 through 10. Isaiah 63. It says, who is this who comes from Edom? Who dyed garments with dyed garments from Bozrah? This one who is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I who speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Mighty to save. Our God is mighty to save. He's mighty to save you no matter what you've done in your life. No matter what sins you've committed, how horrible your life might be. But he's mighty to save you. He is mighty to save me. He has saved me. And I praise God forever that I have found salvation. That's what the Bible is about. That's what the word of God is about. For us mankind to find salvation in Jesus Christ who created us. Mighty to save. And now we go to verse 8. Isaiah 53, we continue. And now, for God said, surely they are my people. It's talking about my people, the Jews, the Hebrews, the Israelites. Imagine God took us out of Egypt after 400 years of slavery. By his mighty right hand, he took us out. And we didn't just come out just traveling by walking. No, no, we came out and we plundered the Egyptians. They threw their gold, they threw their silver, they threw their precious stones, they threw all their belongings to us as we left. And it's wonderful to think, yes, we came out and we were there with such power and authority and anointing. He said, imagine, he said, surely they are my people, children who will not lie. Imagine that. So he became their savior. God became our savior. He saved us. In all our affliction, God was afflicted. Imagine. And the angel of his presence saved them. Saved us. First, he became our savior. He was afflicted. And then he saved us. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. He redeemed us. And then he bore us. He bore them and carried them. He bore us and carried us. This is God himself all the days of all. So imagine, he saves us. He redeems us. He carries us. He bears us. And he carries us. Look at what we do. Verse 10, but they rebelled. Imagine, what a dirty people. What a dirty crowd. All this God has done He's afflicted because we're afflicted. He carries us and bears us. He saves us, redeems us. And what do we do? We rebel. We're the same. You and I are the same. We're children of Adam. Every one of us are rebellious without Christ. All the blessings, all the salvation, and we still rebel. Imagine, we just went through the Red Sea. God parted the Red Sea for us. We come out on the other side. And then imagine... They're hungry and they're saying, I wish we could go back to Egypt. Rebellious people, dirty people, dirty crowd. And then imagine what it says. They rebelled and they grieved his Holy Spirit. Dear ones, listen. You know, many versions say Holy Spirit. Some say Holy Ghost. Listen, the reason it's written Holy Ghost, let me teach you. He's not some, you know, ghost in a, in a sheet with the little eyes cut out. No, 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 it's not that. Holy Ghost from the English Bible, it's from an old English word, Holy Guest. And guest has become ghost over the years. It's Holy Guest. When the beautiful King James Version was being translated from the Hebrew and the Aramaic, it should have put Holy Guest, but it became Holy Ghost. But it's Holy Guest. Holy Spirit is a guest that comes and dwells in us. When you have a guest who comes to your home, you do everything to make that guest happy. 
You serve them. You love them. You communicate with them. But listen, if you make that guest angry, that guest will get up and leave, never to come to your home again. The Holy Spirit is given to us as a holy guest. When you rebel and when you sin again, and then again and again, yes, the grace of God is there, the amazing grace of God, but it doesn't mean you continue sinning. The Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Guest is given to you as a power to uphold the law. But when you resist and you rebel and you make the Holy Spirit upset and angry, he will leave you. And your situation is worse than before. So imagine they rebelled and grieved the Holy Spirit. So don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Make sure that you always keep the Holy Spirit pleased. Do not grieve. And grieve, they grieve the Holy Spirit. So imagine it says, so God turned himself against my people. This is written in the word of God, Isaiah 63. I'm not making it up. He actually turned against us. He turned himself against them as an enemy. God became our enemy. And God fought against them. Listen, dear ones, when you have God become your enemy and he starts fighting against you, you are sunk. You're finished. Don't ever let it come to that. Ever. God's amazing grace. But you know, dear ones, God gave me something precious as we went through the desert for 40 years. This way, that way. Do you know, in 13 days, we could have taken the land of Canaan. We got there. We arrived. Moses sent 12 spies into the land. And they went to spy out the land. And they came back. Ten of them gave a terrible report. But Joshua and Caleb gave a good report. Ten of them came and said, Oh, there's giants there. And the sons of Anak are there. And all of this and all that. We're like little grasshoppers. And all this bad news. And all the people got scared and feared and believed in them. But Joshua and Caleb, filled with the Spirit of God, said, No, no, no. We can take this people. God is with us. But of course, the people rebelled and listened to the ten and Moses was so disheartened. And because of that, God said, this generation is not going to enter my rest, not going to enter Canaan land. And then because of the 10 spies, because of the people, we wandered in the desert back and forth for 40 years. And all those generations of rebellion, rebellious people, dirty people, every one of them died. And only the new generation that were born in the desert, filled with the power of God, with faith, with Joshua and Caleb, they crossed the Jordan after 40 years and they went into the land and they took it with the power of God. This is what, gave, what God gave me. All those new people went into Canaan land and that's why you and I have to be born new. We have to be born again in Christ Jesus and to have the faith and we will make it to heaven's Canaan land, to Beulah land. Hallelujah. We have to be born again in Jesus Christ, and we have to have the spirit of Joshua and Caleb. Joshua turned to the people when they arrived into the land. Many people were rebelling, and they said, and he said, choose this day whom you're going to serve. But me and my house, we are going to serve Yahweh. We're going to serve Yehovah. We're going to serve God, the Lord Adonai. Hallelujah. That's how I live my life. Me and my family, we serve the Lord God, Jehovah. God's amazing grace. So the same were a rebellious people. Imagine Adam, perfect being, created in the image of God. Then he creates the beautiful Eve, brings her to Adam. Eve is from him, from his bones. He says, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And Adam and Eve, beautiful in the garden, having relationship with God daily, talking with Him. 
They're enjoying every tree of the garden. And God says to Adam, you can enjoy every tree of the garden. You can eat from every tree. But don't eat from this one. What do they eat from? That one. Because you and I are like that. Anytime authority tells us to do something, we don't do it. We have the same spirit. Rebellious. We're children of the devil. But praise God, through Jesus Christ, through salvation, we have the power by the blood of Jesus to become children of God. This is God's amazing grace. So we that are born again in Jesus Christ are going to be able to make it to heaven, to Beulah land, to paradise. Hallelujah. By the Spirit of God, we are born again as new creations created in Jesus Christ. But then, hallelujah, we come to Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 18. Listen to what it says. Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats and water with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people saying, this is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. Isn't that wonderful? So there's no remission of sins without spilling of blood. That's what the Bible is teaching us. And do you know from the Old Testament, imagine all the sacrifices that were made, all the animals that were brought by the hundreds of thousands and millions of them daily only covered our sins. But hallelujah, the blood of Jesus Christ, perfect sinless blood of Jesus takes away our sins forever. Praise God, not just hidden sins, but everything is gone and God will never use our sins against us. That's what it means when he doesn't remember our sins anymore. Praise God for the Lamb of God, for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And as we continue in Romans, of course, chapter 1, verses 24 through 32. Imagine Apostle Paul is writing this 2,000 years ago. Look how much sin was happening 2,000 years ago. There's nothing new under the sun, dear ones. Nothing new under the sun. We're seeing sin run rampant, rampant here in America and around the world. Why? Because we're living in the last days and the devil knows his days are short and there's, there's demons, every one of them, they're doing everything to take man into more sin. But listen to what Apostle Paul writes in chapter 1 of Romans. It says in verse 24, verses through 28, it says, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who was blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Verse 27, Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another. Men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, they are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God. Do we have haters of God today? They're everywhere. They hate God. They hate Jesus. They hate the Holy Spirit. Haters of God. This is 2,000 years ago. Violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Do you have disobedient children? They're everywhere. Everywhere I turn, they're Children that are rebelling, rebelling against their parents, disobedience, children, and they're continuing on. And it says, imagine undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, 
who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death. Not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Now, I want you to keep that in your mind. These people that approve others that are sinning and they practice them. Imagine this is what sin brought. It's horrible. But now I love these two words in the Bible. But now, yes, I just mentioned the most horrific sins, evil everywhere. But now Apostle Paul writes all that. But then he writes the most beautiful, but now, hallelujah, hallelujah. Romans chapter 6, verses 20 to 23, it says, For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, verse 22, but now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God. Hallelujah. I'd rather be a slave of God. Isn't that wonderful? Slaves of God. You have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. Hallelujah. For the wages of sin is death. It is death, dear ones. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. But now, hallelujah, Christ has come. But now there's salvation. But now Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood. But now we are free from sin. When his blood cleanses us from sin, we're free from it forever. When the word of God purifies us, when the Holy Spirit of God sanctifies us. But now I have Jesus Christ. I will never sin again. We have the power. That's the amazing grace of God. He gives us the power to uphold the law, which is the Ten Commandments, which is forever. Hallelujah. Do you want to see a perfect picture of the amazing grace of God? There is no other embodiment. There's no other picture that can actually show the perfect, amazing grace of God. This is that picture. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is the amazing grace of God. With the Son of the living God beaten, unrecognizable, carrying the cross with the crown of thorns upon his head, humiliated, spat upon, mocked, carrying the cross, fallen to the ground in the midst of an evil people, crying out, crucify him. This is the amazing grace grace of God. When God takes us out of the sinful world and he cleanses us with his blood through his son Jesus Christ and he purifies us with his word which is Jesus himself with his water he purifies us and he sanctifies us with his Holy Spirit Hallelujah. We do not sin anymore. And it's the amazing grace of God that comes upon us. Hallelujah. He makes us holy just as he is holy. That's why the Bible says, be holy as I, the Lord, your God, am holy. Separate, pure, clean, holy, righteous. Hallelujah. Not because of our righteousness, not because of our holiness, but Jesus Christ, who is righteous and holy, dwells in us now. And he makes us holy. And then he puts us back into this unholy world with so much evil and sexual immorality running rampant through the streets of America and the world. Everywhere you look, it's disgusting. There's so much sin that's happening. All sorts of cheating and lying. All sorts of murder. All sorts of backbiting and jealousy and hatred. And so much stubbornness and pride. But listen to the greater miracle. He puts us in this evil generation and he keeps us holy. He keeps us holy. And we walk with authority and anointing. And everywhere we walk, we stay holy. We speak holy. We live holy lives. 
We do not sin anymore. This is the amazing grace of God. Hallelujah. Romans 5, 1 through 2. Listen to what Apostle Paul writes. That amazing man of God. He hated Christians. He persecuted them. He killed them. He imprisoned them. He did so much. But Jesus met him. He met the living God on the way to Damascus. Hallelujah. He met the living God who created the sun. Brighter than the sun. Blinded soul. Hallelujah. Then Ananias prayed over him. And his eyes were opened again. And Apostle Paul, his name was changed from Saul to Paul. And he became the greatest apostle who ever lived. And wrote these beautiful epistles in the Bible, these letters. And he wrote Romans 5. It says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. This grace, hallelujah, to the Lamb of God. And then Romans 8, 1 through 2. Listen to this. Hallelujah. We have been freed from the law of sin and death. Imagine Romans 8. It says, Therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death hallelujah praise god and then as we continue you know as as i want to share with you i want to share with you a story now to teach you more about the amazing grace of god that came to me hallelujah to teach you what the grace of god means i was 16 years old not too many years ago 16 years old and i had just received my license to drive and i'm 16 years old and I got my first car. My father gave me a second, of course. It was a, it was a used car, and I was so happy. And I'm driving on, this, on the freeways of California, and I'm going, and of course, I'm keeping, you know, uh, uh, the law. But I didn't know, and I was speeding, and I'm enjoying myself. And sure enough, all of a sudden, in my rearview mirror, I saw the blue lights and the red lights and the white lights spinning away. And I thought to myself, my heart sank. I'm 16 years old. And I saw that the policeman was behind me. And of course, I pulled to the right. I'm on the freeway. I pulled to the right safely. And of course, he came out too. And, and he came to my window. And I lowered the window down. And he came and said to me, he said, do you know that you were speeding? No, I didn't say, no, officer. No, 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 you're wrong. You know, I'm a good driver. You know, I keep the law. I never break the law. You know, I wasn't speeding. You know, I always go on the right speed. I stop at every stop sign, you know, every, every red light. I didn't say like that. When he said you were speeding, I said, you know what I said? I said, you are right, officer. I was speeding. Because when he put those lights in my rearview mirror, I looked at my speedometer and I was speeding. And so I didn't make excuses. I said, yes, I was speeding. You are right, officer. And you know what this officer did? He gave me grace. He gave me grace. He turned to me because I said like that. And he said, son, he said, I'm not going to write you a ticket this time. But he said, make sure you... Obey the law and not speed anymore. I said, thank you very much. I will. And you don't know how happy I was when he went back to his car. I said, thank you, Lord. Praise your name. And you should have seen me. I'm watching with my rearview mirror. He went into this car. I'm careful. He's there. Carefully, I put in my left signal on. Cars are passing so fast on the freeway. Carefully, I went in when it was safe to the left and I, because he's there. 
but listen to me as I went my way. Whenever I come to a stop sign, I stop. When I come to a red light, I stop. When I see the speed limit, I keep it. If there is a policeman or there is not a policeman, because the law is always there. It's the same, dear ones. The amazing grace of God. Hallelujah. The Ten Commandments is forever. The law is always there. Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. Hallelujah. So the Ten Commandments are always there. And by the grace of God, we say, when we know that we are sinners, when the, when the Word of God, the Bible says that we are all sinners, we don't come to Christ, we don't come to God and say, no, no, I'm a good man. Father, God, I'm a good person. I do good things. I give to the widow. I give to the poor. I give to the homeless. I give to those that are needy, to the orphan. Oh my goodness, I do so much. But listen, dear ones, even if I did all those good things, and the Apostle Paul says, even if I gave my body to be burned, all those things, if we don't have the blood of Jesus, all our goodness are as filthy rags before God. But because we say, oh Lord God, yes, you are right. I am a sinner. I sin. I am a sinner. You're right. Give me your grace. Cleanse me with your blood. Purify me with your water. Sanctify me with your Holy Spirit because you can. Please do it, Lord. Do it. I need you. When you say that and you cry out and you say, Lord, cleanse my iniquities. Cleanse my sins. I give them all to you, whatever it might be, lusts and, and hatred and jealousies and stubbornness and pride, whatever. Give it to the Lord when you do like that. The amazing grace of God comes upon you. And the grace of God does not mean that you continue going on sinning. No, the grace of God is given to you. Yes, of course, if you sin a few times, of course the grace of God is there. But it doesn't mean you continue sinning. No, no, no. Hallelujah. When we have the grace of God, listen to me. God gave this to me years ago. The grace of God is given to us to give us the power to uphold the law. Yes, we do not live under the law anymore. We live under grace. That means when we live under grace, we have power. Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit power comes upon you. When that power comes upon you and you have the grace of God, you have the power to uphold the law and you keep the Ten Commandments forever without breaking any one of them. That's the power of the amazing grace of God. Praise, blessed be the name of the Lord. And in Hollywood, do you know that I worked in Hollywood for 41 years? You're saying, Reverend Luther, Doctor, and you worked in Hollywood? Yes, I did. And I produced so many shows, so many movies, so many commercials. I even worked in news. And do you know that we used to cover the Oscars in Hollywood? You've heard of the Oscars. We used to go cover it. And we're there in Hollywood. And you know, of course, you know, Hollywood is the once a year, they give the Oscars to the actors and actresses. And the whole world watches, not just America, millions watch all over the world. And of course, the women are watching what the women are going to be dressed in. And the men are watching who's going to win this, who's going to win that. Of course. And you know how it is. You know, you know, those actors and actresses that made millions to the studios and producers, and directors, of course, those producers and directors and, and, and the, the studios, you know, those actors and actresses that made them millions, of course, they're their friends. And they invite them to come that night and they say to them, we're going to give you an award. So those actors and actresses, they dress up and they wear beautiful tuxes and beautiful dresses and all the makeup and this and that and the whole world is watching and the paparazzi is, paparazzi is there and all this and they come in limousine cars. Oh my! And then when they arrive at the Oscars, dear Lord in heaven, no, no, when they come out of the car, don't let them step on concrete. Don't let them step on asphalt. God forbid they do that. What does Hollywood do? 
they roll out the red carpet. Why? Because it's their friends, so-called friends. And when they come and they step out of the car, they step on that beautiful red carpet because Hollywood is saying to those actors and actresses, oh, you made 70 million for us this year. Come, we're gonna give you an award. You're our friend. Oh, you made 500 million for our studio this year. Come, they're wonderful friends that year. But the following year, that same actor or actress, if they don't bring any money to the studio, they're history. They're not friends anymore, they're gone. You'll never hear from them ever again. But listen, dear ones, when Jesus was dying on the cross, when he was shedding his perfect blood, crying out to the Father, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's beaten, he's suffering, he's thirsty. He's bleeding, he's unrecognizable. When he was dying on the cross for you and me, he was rolling out the red carpet for you and me. He was rolling it out for you and me, his enemies. You and I were his enemies. Every one of us, rebellious, dirty people. I don't care who you are, how good you are, you're rebellious, you're poor and wretched and naked and blind, every one of you. He was rolling out the red carpet to us, his enemies. And he was saying, come, come Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Are you kidding me? And when we come to the cross of Jesus and say, Lord, I am your enemy. Forgive me. I'm the one who crucified you. Because of my sins, you were crucified. Here are my sins, Lord. I lay them at your feet. You are right. I am a sinner. Hallelujah, the greatest miracle happens. His blood that was shed for you cleanses you from all sin forever. And dear ones, the Bible says we become his friends. You know what Jesus was doing? When we come to the cross and Jesus stands there with his blood cleansing you, hallelujah, God the Father. God the Father, Abba, Elohim, the Father was reconciling himself back to us, his children, through his son, Jesus Christ. And we, his children, were being reconciled back to the Father through Jesus on the cross. This is the amazing grace of God. Hallelujah. Years ago, there was a filthy man, disgusting, vile, evil. This man was so vile, he was from England, he had a ship. And he would take his ship from England and he would travel all the way to Africa. And this evil man would rip husbands from wives, wives from husbands, children from their parents, parents from their children, and he would put them on his boat, and he would bring them back to England and to Europe, and he would bring them all the way to America. Hundreds and thousands died on his ship, and he would sell them as slaves. Horrific sin, evil, completely from the devil, from the evil one. This evil, disgusting man. But listen to me. One day, he was there, he was ready to go on his ship back to Africa to rip more people's lives apart. 
a person, a Christian, gave him a tract, a Christian tract. This vile person took it. You think, what is that going to do? And he's on his ship. Days have passed. And he reads that tract. And he learns about the amazing grace of God. Through his son, Jesus Christ, dying on the cross at Calvary. And listen to me as he reads, the Holy Spirit of God convicts him. On his ship, he falls down on his knees. And he cries out to God. He knows he's a vile man. He's disgusting. He's evil. He's filthy. He cries out to God, save me, Lord. Oh, Sanna, Hosanna, save me, Lord. And the amazing grace of God comes to this man, his name was John Newton. His life was changed right there on the ship. He was born again in Jesus Christ. His life was changed. He was a child of the devil. He became a child of God. He was a child of darkness. He became a child of light. He was born again. Of course his whole life was changed. Of course he stopped everything that he was doing. Never again to take another man or woman and sell them as slaves. His whole life was changed. And listen, this man had no musical experience, no education, nothing. He had no education even. And look at the power of the Holy Spirit. Imagine filthy, evil, vile man now born again in Jesus Christ. He wrote the most powerful him that's ever been written and thousands and millions and millions have sung it in churches all over the world for over a hundred years and it's called the amazing grace and this is what he wrote amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour i first believed through many dangers toils and snares we have already come twas grace that brought us safe thus far and grace will lead us home when we been there ten thousand years bright shining as the sun we've no last days to sing god's praise than when we first begun hallelujah Amazing grace of God. Romans 5, chapter 8, Romans 5, verses 8 through 11 says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Hallelujah. Praise God. When Jesus said, Father, now they are in me and I am in you. And Father, you are in me, you are in them. Listen, we have become one with God. We have become one with the Father through Jesus Christ. This is an amazing miracle. This is the amazing grace of God. We have been reconciled to the Father again. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name forever. Listen, as Romans chapter 5, and as it continues, it talks about we are more than conquerors in Christ. Do you know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Abednego, you remember the three Jews that went to Babylon? You know, when, when Nebuchadnezzar, when he built that idol of himself, that huge idol, and told the people when he hear the music, oh, the sound, every one of you shall bow down and worship the idol, and whoever doesn't is going to be thrown into the furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, never will we bow down to that idol. They were conquerors. But listen, when Nebuchadnezzar heard of it, he bound them and he had them thrown into the fiery furnace. But hallelujah, when he did that, he's looking into the furnace, fiery furnace, and he says to his servants, how many did you throw in there? They said three. But he says, I see four. This is a pagan king, filthy, pagan, godless. And he recognized, he says, he says, but I see a fourth one and he looks like the son of God. Here's a pagan that recognizes Jesus, the son of God. Many churches today don't even recognize Jesus. Many so-called Christians today don't even recognize Jesus, the son of the living God. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when Christ was there with them in that fiery furnace and protected them, and he brought them out from the fiery furnace, there wasn't even a smell of fire on them. They became more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul writes that we are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ. Daniel, he's there. The, the king says, you cannot worship any other God except me. And Daniel says, no. And he goes to his house three times a day, opens up the curtains, and he towards Jerusalem, and he worships the only true and living God, Yahweh. He was a conqueror. But hallelujah, when the king threw him in the lion's den, and God shut up those mouths of those lions, and he was saved, and the next day the king brought him out, he became more than a conqueror. Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, he was a conqueror. He, when he died on the cross, he saved us with his blood. Yes, he saves us. His blood was shed. He was a conqueror, Jesus on the cross. But hallelujah, yes, after three days, when he rose from the dead, hallelujah, when he conquered death and the grave and sin and the devil and his demons and the world, he became more than a conqueror. And you and I in Christ Jesus are more than conquerors. This is the amazing grace of God. Hallelujah. I am rejoicing because I know that everyone watching me, you are being penetrated by the power of God through his Holy Spirit. As I'm preaching these words, it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit speaking through me to you. Because the amazing grace of God is coming to you right now. Wherever you are, whatever you've done in your life, you're in your home, you're in your living room, you're in your bedroom, you're in your kitchen, you're at school, you're at business, you're at work, you're in your car, you're at the beach, you could be on a plane, you could be anywhere. But the amazing grace of God now has come to you. And he's saying to you, the Father is saying, I love you. I love you. I have sent my son Jesus for you. You're a sinner, whatever you've done, vile, evil things, whatever it might be. Jesus is saying, I died on the cross for you and shed my blood for you. You were my enemy, but I love you. Come to me 
and I will cleanse you with my blood. Purify me with my word, the word of God, with my water, and sanctify you with my Holy Spirit, and I will forgive you, and you will become my son or daughter forever. And no one and nothing can take you away from the love of Jesus Christ, from God. Hallelujah. So I'm going to pray for you right now. I can't pray for you for salvation, but I can pray and guide you. Right now, the Holy Spirit of God is convicting you. The amazing grace of God has come to you. And if you want to be saved, if you want to be forgiven, if you want salvation in Christ Jesus, right now I'm going to pray and I'm going to guide you. And you can pray these words. I'm going to pray in the perfect prayer of repentance. And you can say the same words or just pray from your heart. You don't have to say the exact words. It's a heart issue. And after that, I'm going to pray for healing, for Jesus to touch you and heal you. Whatever ailments you might have, whatever sicknesses, whatever diseases, Jesus will heal you because Jesus is here. He's with me. He's with you. The Spirit of God is everywhere. And if you believe and I believe together our faith, you will be healed. Jesus will touch you and heal you completely because his name is Jehovah Haphael. Our God is our healer. Hallelujah. And then I'm going to pray for anyone that wants to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, power and fire. Praise God. Let's go to a time of prayer in Jesus name. If you want to pray like this to be saved, pray, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I know I'm a sinner. You are right. I'm a sinner. But Lord Jesus, I thank you and I believe you left all of heaven's glory and the amazing grace of God has come to me. You came, Jesus, and you obeyed the Father and you came to this dark world and you went all the way to the cross for me and you were crucified there and you shed your perfect, sinless, priceless blood for me you didn't shed just part of your blood you shed all of your blood for me and jesus right now i just i just ask you to come and cleanse me these are my sins just just give all your sins to jesus right now just give them whatever it might be hatreds evil thoughts jealousies gossip fears doubts all sorts of cheating lying bad manners cursing swearing Whatever it might be, stubbornness and pride, lusts of the eyes, lust of the flesh, lust of the pride of life, whatever sin and bondage that you are in, give them to Jesus right now. He has the power to take away every one of those sins and more. The Bible says where sin increased, his grace increased more. In the perfect blood of Jesus right now, Lord Jesus, cleanse me from all of these sins. And say, Lord, I repent. I turn away from the world. I turn away from the devil and his demons and the pleasures of the world. I turn away from sin. And I turn to you, Jesus Christ, on the cross. Lord Jesus, cleanse me with your blood. Purify me with your water, the word of God. And sanctify me with your Holy Spirit. I repent and I turn to you. Not because you can give me gifts and presents and prosperity no 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 you already do that prosperity is in you jesus christ i come to you and repent because you lord god are god alone and above that jesus you suffered for me you suffered for me and because of that you deserve all my glory all my praise all my life all my worship because it's my gift that I can give to you, that it belongs to you. So I give myself to you, Jesus, because you suffered for me. You are worthy, and you are worthy, and you are worthy. And I pray all these things in the name that's above every other name. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. If you prayed like this, you are born again in Jesus Christ. I welcome you into the kingdom of heaven, into the kingdom of God. Welcome. 
all of heaven is rejoicing. The Bible says, when one soul is saved, all of heaven rejoices. And they're rejoicing because of you. And we praise God for that. Now I'm going to pray for healing. Whatever ailments you have, whatever diseases you have, Jesus knows them. And he's going to heal you. Right now, I see a person in the spirit. God is telling me, your hand is in so much pain. Jesus is going to touch you and heal you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, he touches you and heals you by your faith. Right now, there's cancers. I can see cancers in your body, whoever you might be. And the doctors have said there's no hope. It has spread all over your body. Jesus has been healing this everywhere. Everywhere I travel, everywhere I preach, Jesus is healing cancers. Right now, Jesus, stretch out your mighty healing hand and touch your sons and daughters and heal them from their cancers. Right now, they're gone forever. He's just healed you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His name is Jehovah Haphael. Our God is our healer. Just under his wings, there's healing. Just in his name, there is healing. Just in the name of Jesus, there's healing. Hallelujah. So many other diseases right now. I pray with you, brother and sister, wherever you are. Jesus touches you and heals you completely. Praise you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now we come to the most powerful part for baptism of the Holy Spirit, power and fire. This is the second blessing. Jesus said to his disciples, they were born again. But he said, stay in Jerusalem, tarry in Jerusalem until the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And Jesus has died. He has risen from the dead. Now he ascends to the Father. And the disciples go back to Jerusalem. They go to the upper room. And they go there for 10 days. Jesus was with them 40 days. Now 10 days towards Pentecost. And on that Pentecost day, the first day of the week, 50th day, hallelujah. Like a mighty rushing wind, a sound of a mighty rushing wind. After 10 days of praying and singing hymns, the apostles, and worshiping the Lord day and night, like a sound of a mighty rushing wind, the Holy Spirit of God came upon every one of them, 120 of them, and tongues of fire were upon every one of them. And they were set on fire. They had power and fire. The same Peter that denied Jesus three times. Now he's bold. Now he's powerful. And he goes out and he turns to his Jewish brethren. He's not afraid of them anymore. And he said, you, you crucified the king of glory. He's not afraid of them. He's not afraid to be stoned or crucified or put in prison. He's not afraid anymore. He is filled with the power and anointing and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when he preaches like that from Abraham to Jesus Christ, 3,000 Jewish brethren cry out, what shall we do, brethren? Peter says, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And 3,000 Jews became Christians. That's how the birth of the church of Jesus Christ began. And these same disciples, now with the power and fire, they went out and they turned the world upside down. They went into prison and God was opening up prison doors. That's how powerful the baptism of the Holy Spirit of God is. Jesus knew that his disciples were going to live mediocre lives, but he wanted them to live victorious lives in Jesus Christ. That's why we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, power and fire. So if you want this victorious living, this victorious life, I'm going to pray over you now. By faith, you're going to be baptized with power and fire. I speak to you, O breath of God. I prophesy to you, O breath of God. I speak to you. I bless you, O Lord God of heaven and earth. Right now, from the four winds of the earth, come and breathe on these that are slain. Baptize every one of them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, baptize them with your Holy Spirit, power and fire. 
Hallelujah. I see you baptized. I see you in the spirit receiving the power and fire of God. Just came upon you. You're changed. From this moment, you're going to walk with authority and anointing in Jesus Christ. You're not going to live a mediocre life anymore in Christianity. You're going to live a victorious life in Christ. And you're going to bring your loved ones, your friends, your neighbors, your colleagues to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. I rejoice with you in all these miracles that happen in your life. If you have been saved today, if you have been healed today, if you've been baptized by the Holy Spirit, power and fire, write me. Write to me. Let me know. I want to rejoice with you in these miracles that God has done. Go to doctorianministries.org as you see on the screen. My website, my ministry, which is God's ministry. There's a contact area. Write to me. Tell me what God has done. Be blessed there in my ministry website. There's so many wonderful areas of ministry. Go and read and be blessed. And because I am God's servant, as you are there, you can donate and bless my ministry, which is God's ministry. If you've been blessed, bless me and God will bless you. I am a child of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Judah, the same tribe of Judah that Jesus came from, I have come from. If you bless me, you'll be blessed. God made this blessing. He said to us that whoever blesses me will be blessed. I am God's servant and a child of Abraham. Bless me and you will be blessed. And as you bless me, you will have a big part in my ministry, which is God's ministry of what? of salvation of souls, healing of souls, and baptism of the Holy Spirit, power and fire of souls, and restorations of marriages and families and relationships, parents with their children, children with their parents, relatives, loved ones, friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, relationships to be restored, united, reunited, healed, hallelujah, I can see it already happening. You will have a part in this and bring others in your family, maybe your brother, sister, mother, father, relative, neighbor that doesn't know Jesus. Bring them into your home. Have a night together where you can watch my sermons together for them to hear the word of God powerfully so they can be changed in Christ Jesus. Be born again and be saved and healed and baptized. Bring them. Take part. Be awake, be alert. Jesus is not coming back for a blind old woman with stains on her clothes, running into walls. That's what the church of Jesus Christ looks like today. Everywhere I go. No, no, no. Jesus is not coming back for that. Jesus Christ is coming back for his bride. His bride. Pure, holy, clean, white, without any stains on her. Alert, awake. Isaiah 52 says, awake, awake. Rise up. Put on light, Christ will give you light. Awake, rise from your sleep. Christ will give you light. And as we are awake like that, we are waiting for our bridegroom. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And I will end now with Psalm 1914. I'm going to say it in my Armenian language, which is the heavenly language. And then I will say it in English. So you will hear God's language, heavenly language. Pernis choskera userdis choruta koarchevadan tuneli alan of der imvemes upergichas. Amen. Salmos das nina das nichors. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Psalm 1914. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Father and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and until the victorious return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lord God, richly bless you. Shalom.